You want to hit high straight balls, that's pretty pretty good right there. Two in a row that were dead straight with more loft on the club, but you definitely notice that spin rate has gone up. <laughs> Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. We have a debate on our hands. So today's video is going to focus on whether the loft of the driver or the golf shaft is the major influencer on spin. First off, I'm going to say is a lot of it definitely comes down to player dependence. Some people do definitely react differently to golf shafts and different lofts on the driver. But for today's test, we are going to test a wide range. We're gonna first start out with a 10.5 degree driver. I have the Ping G425 Max with a stock stiff golf shaft, the Ulta CB Slate. So after we hit that, we're going to test the range. So we're gonna drop the loft down to a nine degree driver, and we're also gonna test the 12 degree head, and we're gonna pay attention to spin rate differences. We're also going to test different golf shafts. So we're going to test a much lighter golf shaft. That is the Ulta Distancer. That is like a senior golf shaft, weighs around about 40 grams. And at the other end of the spectrum, we're going to test the Ping Tour 75X golf shaft. We're going to hit a whole bunch of shots with each setup. And then we're going to dive deep and see if it's the loft that's influencing the spin or if it's the golf shaft that's influencing the spin. So we first started off with the 10.5 degree head with the Ulta CB Slate stiff golf shaft. So it's 55 grams in weight. So you'll notice right off the bat, numbers aren't exactly optimal for my swing speed. Now today for today's test, I am only swinging just a little bit under 110 miles an hour. I'm gonna try and keep that constant all the way through. But the most important thing we're gonna focus on is that spin rate. We're definitely gonna pay attention to that spin rate and whether it's the loft of the driver or whether it's the golf shaft that makes a, the biggest difference for me here. So you'll notice, not optimal, my spin rate just a little bit over 3,000 RPMs on those five shots. So let's first test the golf shafts. So let's hit the Ulta Distancer and the Ping Tour 75X and see if we notice any difference. Okay, real quick look at the numbers with the Ulta Distancer with the 10.5 degree head. You'll notice the club speed. Now I'm trying to keep the club speed about the same with all these clubs, but you'll notice it's a little bit faster. You've got a lighter golf shaft that's only 40 grams in weight. It's naturally gonna cause you to swing the ball just a little bit faster. Um, but you'll notice efficiency 149, so this is still a good test. Spin rate, we're talking still in the low 3000s on the spin. So really nothing really changed. I would have expected maybe the spin rate on the lighter shaft to go just a little bit higher, but really it didn't. We'll notice that it actually dropped by about 50 RPM. So there's really nothing in it with regards to the, the golf shaft there. Um, it's kind of interesting how the launch angle was just slightly lower, whether that's me being player dependent or whether that's the shaft, I, me reacting to the golf shaft, I don't know. But as I mentioned, a lot of the testing, it's all player dependent. So you'll notice the launch angle was just a little bit lower. That's why the ball spun just a little bit less there too. But typically, you'll expect a lighter golf shaft will maybe launch a little bit higher and spin a little more. Didn't happen in this case. But let's test the other extreme. Let's go to the heavier, extra stiff golf shaft and see what happens. So Ping Tour 75X, still with the 10.5 degree max driver. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll notice what happened to the spin rate and also consistently what happened to the spin rate. If we notice there, 2551 was the average spin rate. With the other two shafts, we'll notice the spin rate was just over 3000 RPMs. So I mentioned it definitely is player dependent 
Now I play a golf shaft that's going to be fairly similar to this. I play a slightly lighter but extra stiff golf shaft, which does help to get my spin rate down a little bit. We'll notice what happens. We're able to drop about 500 RPMs of spin by playing a little heavier extra stiff golf shaft. I do remind you though, it is definitely player dependent. Everyone reacts kind of differently to the golf shaft. Speaking on the golf shaft swing speed numbers, you'll notice 108.5, it wasn't my fastest. The Distanza shaft was the fastest speed at just a little bit over 109 miles an hour. Ball speed actually, once again, wasn't the fastest either, but the spin rate stayed down, which was able to get me to go a little, ball go a little bit further. So if you take a look on the right side, you can see my dispersion pattern also was cleaned up a little bit, so a little bit tighter. If you look at those purple circles, a little bit closer together there as well. So yes, golf shaft definitely matters, but let's see if the loft on the driver makes more of a difference or less of a difference. Keep in mind, golf shaft is definitely player dependent. Let's check out the lofts. Okay, so I put the Ulta CB Slate 55S back in the nine degree head this time to test to see if it was loft that's making more of a difference. And you can get to see the spin rate definitely dropped. You'll notice the spin rate dropped from 3088 to 2254 just by changing the loft on the driver. So we went from the 10.5 to the nine degree driver and it definitely made a huge difference there too. The shaft that I just hit before was the uh, Ping Tour 75X. Going back to the lighter golf shaft again, definitely influenced my club speed a little bit. We know I picked up about one mile an hour more club speed. Um, but you will notice how the spin rate still stayed down even though I was swinging faster. Normally if you generate more speed, there's more potential for that ball to spin a little bit more, which it didn't. So the loft definitely influenced the amount of spin that was on the golf ball more than what the golf shaft did. So I'm gonna test the 12 degree head here next, just to see how much the spin goes up this time. One thing you'll notice though, when I went back to the lighter golf shaft as well, you'll notice the dispersion pattern. It got a little larger there again. So maybe after I do the 12 degree head, maybe I'll do a good combination. Maybe I'll do a combination with the nine degree head and the Ping Tour 75, just to see if we can really dial in that spin and also accuracy. You want to hit high straight balls, that's pretty, pretty good right there. Two in a row that would dead straight with more loft on the club, but you definitely notice that spin rate has gone up. And finally, we went to the other extreme. So we switched to the 12 degree G425 max head. First, I just want to touch on how easy it was to hit straight. Now, if accuracy is more important, having more loft on the driver definitely may be a key point. You can, if you pay attention to the difference there, you can see the orange circle much, much straighter. So that's the 12 degree head. We notice the nine degree head, notice the blue circle was a little wider of left to right there too. So there's definitely the, the distance versus accuracy debate. And we'll definitely do some more content on that there as well. But you we just wanted to kind of showcase how much easier it was to hit it straighter with 12 degrees of loft versus nine degrees. But spin rate is our story today. We're testing the spin rate comparisons with regards to loft on the driver and golf shafts. So the 12 degree head, the spin rate was about 3238. That was the highest spin. So it's kind of interesting. You'll notice when I was hitting the 10.5 degree head with the same shaft, the spin rate was just a little over 3000. The 12 degree head picked up more spin and the nine degree head picked up less spin and actually it was significantly less spin there as well. So we went from a range from 3088 with the 10.5, 32, 30, 38 with the 12 degree and then we went down to 2254 with the nine degree head there too. So of this test so far, the best combination has been the club with the least amount of loft. Less loft on the driver gave us less spin rather than going to the heavier, lower spinning golf shaft. 
I mentioned we want to combine accuracy and spin and dispersion and distance all together. So I'm actually going to hit five more shots with the G425 9 degree head with the Pingtor 75X to see if we get any more gains in lowering that spin rate. And finally, we combined the loft on the driver and the heavier weighted golf shaft to really dial in that spin rate. We'll notice we were able to reduce the spin rate even more. We'll notice we dropped about 130 RPMs less spin by combining less loft on the driver and a more optimal low spinning golf shaft that fits my golf swing. The most important thing for this though is accuracy. So yes, less loft on the driver is going to reduce spin. Yes, a heavier or lower spinning golf shaft is going to cause the ball to spin a little bit less. But you really need to figure out what's going to be the best combination to hit the ball straighter. We noticed here that when I was hitting these shots, when we went to the nine degree head with that Altus CB 55 shaft, my dispersion was fairly wide. So if you look at that blue circle. So the golf shaft wasn't the best combination. Yes, the ball was spinning less, but I wasn't hitting it quite as straight. So we noticed that the dispersion pattern when I hit the 10.5 degree with the Ping Tor 75X, that's the purple circle was pretty tight. So we decided, well, let's put the two of them together. Let's do the nine degree head with the Ping Tor 75X and see if we can really optimize these results. And the result was pretty good shots. I mean, that, that green circle, is exceptionally good. Not only was it going further, it was going much straighter and every shot was definitely in the middle of the fairway. So to summarize whether it is the loft of the driver or the golf shaft that is doing the work to reduce or increase the spin rate on your drives, it's a combination of the both. It really is player dependent. I will say the loft on the driver is probably the higher influencer. The golf shaft definitely matters, so we want to make sure we're playing the right golf shaft for a player's swing tendency. But by changing the loft on the driver is definitely going to influence it more. And that's the reason why at second swing that we do always fit and get the club head correct first before trying out those golf shafts. So we like to test different heads and get the loft of the driver dialed in first. Then we dive deeper into trying and assessing those golf shafts. I like to think of the club head as the engine, and I like to think of the golf shafts as the transmission. The, the car's not going to start without the transmission, but you need the engine to make sure everything's kind of working there too. So you need all parts to be working together to really give you the most optimal results. We notice when we combine the right loft and the right golf shaft for me today, I hit it so much straighter, and I was really, really happy with that there too. So, Great stuff today. I think this is a very, very important debate to kind of discuss. Loft on the driver definitely influences the spin, but so does the golf shaft, and it's always player dependent. I just think that the club head does more of the work than the golf shaft does. I hope you enjoyed this content. As a reminder, please subscribe to our channel. We've got other great content like this coming your way in the future. Thanks for watching. <laughs>